The stations of the cross began quite naturally in the days of the apostles, just after the crucifixion. You can imagine John or one of the others saying, it's quiet outside, anyone want to go over that journey with me? And perhaps half a dozen would say, yes, I would like to come with you. So together, they would start out from Pilate's Court to make their way along that road, which soon became known as the Via Della Rosa, the Way of Sorrows. Every now and then they would stop and John would say, this is where he fell, this is where his mother met him. It was here by the gate that he spoke to some people who were weeping. Then they would all stand still on that very spot and think and pray. Then they would walk on, pausing here and there, until they arrived at Calvary. The way of the cross took hold of people's hearts. It brought them very near to the sufferings of their Lord. Today, many churches have a set of 14 plaques representing the events that took place on that journey. During Lent, we go over this journey together in much the same way as the Apostles did in those early days. So what have we come for? We've come to ponder and to pray. The word station means a place to stop, to stand still. The stations of the cross are places along the road where we can enter and accept a mystery we might otherwise be too busy, angry or discouraged to consider. The way of the cross is a special kind of prayer. It's a drama. Drama is not an artificial thing. A play is not a diversion from real life. A good play is more real than anything we are used to calling real. Drama turns life itself inside out to show us what it means. The walking and the waiting that this prayer involves are part of the prayer, for they are part of the play. Let's relax, be calm and be still. Let us pray. Lord, in this time of quiet, help me to be still. Help me to realise that I'm in your living sacramental presence. Lord Jesus, pardon my sins and permit me to accompany you on your journey to Calvary. As I contemplate your journey to the cross, help me to say the prayer of contrition with real meaning. Please grant me the gift of true sorrow, for this alone can bring me close to your blessed passion and death 
and to the saving power of the resurrection. Lord, grant to us all here tonight a truly contrite heart. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. At the beginning, Mary had received in her body the seed of God's life. Through her willingness to cooperate with God's plan, God had taken our human nature. He became man. So much of this cannot be properly put into words. He shares all that we shall ever know or experience. There's a long Christian tradition that in some circumstances war is justified because when another country takes a human life, this is seriously wrong. Therefore, countries and states have a duty to defend their citizens and defend justice. Protecting innocent human life and defending important moral values sometimes requires willingness to use force and violence. For the people of Ukraine to stand up to Russia is legitimate. But is it also true that the ongoing war is justified because it's causing more suffering and death each day? We offer this station for all who administer justice and for our own witness to the life we have received. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us.
Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Nobody ever would have thought that God our Father could send his only Son to the cross to restore peace and justice between heaven and earth. Yet that is exactly what he did. So it is that Jesus receives the cross freely and gladly though he can hardly stand under the weight of it. Even he wonders how many steps he can take before he has to give in. Taking on board suffering for a higher cause is what the people of Ukraine are fighting for today. God's love is shown through the suffering of humankind and in the symbol of the cross. The Orthodox Church of Ukraine is a symbol of strength and faith at this time and an example to Christians the world over. We offer this station for all who are sick or disabled and that we may carry our cross with Jesus. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. Jesus falls for the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. For a moment he staggered, and then he crashed to the ground. God in the dust. Even the physical strength of a man in his early thirties could not carry what he had to endure so he had to admit defeat. One of the first casualties of the war in Ukraine was Vitaly Shakin, a Marine from the infantry battalion who blew himself up on the Henyshensk bridge to prevent a line of Russian tanks from crossing. This act of self-sacrifice was not a permanent fall for the people of Ukraine, as they've stopped the Russian advance for over six weeks. We offer this station for those who have lapsed from the sacraments and in penitence for those times we have caused others to fall. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. 
because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. What is so stunning about Mary is her ability to accept things as they are. It would have been easy for her to avoid this moment, to feel sorry for herself, to expect sympathy and attention. Yet she is here to give whatever support and help she can to her dying son. All through the Gospels, we find her ready to trust, to accept, to believe, and to ponder things in her heart. Our faith is tested when we see the suffering of those we love. As young Ukrainians exchange university for uniforms, Maxim Lutsik, a 19-year-old biology student, said he wasn't phased about trying to become a soldier after less than a week of training. He'd said he'd manage with some weapons training because he'd spent five years in the scouts learning forest skills. That was over five weeks ago. And now we don't know if Maxim is still alive. We also recall that captured Russian soldiers have wept for their mothers. We offer this station for all who work at places of pilgrimage and in thanksgiving for all who care for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. forced to carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Simon was forced into helping Jesus. It was totally against his will. He had only just stopped to watch this man. He needed to be looking after his children. He didn't know what the fuss was about. Yet this apparently chance event changed his whole life. He was converted, totally changed in his attitudes. The German people have welcomed Ukrainian refugees arriving by train. It could have been us, they say. As they get off the trains at Berlin's Hauptbahnhof, there's a crowd, hundreds strong of German families offering the refugees places in their own homes. They hold up homemade signs. One says, can host two people short or long term? Big room, one to three people. Children welcome too, for as long as you want, says another. We offer this station for all voluntary aid workers and for our willingness to support others in distress. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. It was such a simple act just to wipe his face. It was such a brave act just to wipe his face. This would at least have led to sneers and gossip. She could have been trodden on or thrown aside by the soldiers, or arrested for attempting to help a criminal. Yet she did what she could. Helping those in distress can change our lives forever. A simple act of humanity towards the aggressors was shown when a Ukrainian woman calmed one of them down, telling the soldier not to worry. She used her phone to make a video call to his mother. As soon as his mother appeared on the screen, he burst into tears. We offer this station for all who care for the sick and that we may reflect the face of Christ. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. Jesus falls for a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. Even with Simon's help, the weight of the cross, the weight of our sins, is too heavy for him to carry, so he, again he crashes to the ground. Becoming almost boring, isn't it? Many of us make excuses for our sins. The generals and the oligarchs around Vladimir Putin are key to the future of the Russian regime, whether it survives or ends soon. But the Russian president is conducting purges of military generals and intelligence personnel, and even Roman Abramovich has been caught up in the accusations. There's been arrests of FSB, Federal Security Service officers, for alleged poor intelligence about Ukrainian resistance and military strategists have been made responsible for the conduct of the war. We offer this station for those who do not recognise their sins and that we may be ready to receive God's forgiveness. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus was born a Jew. He was a member of that race who had such great hopes for the future, to whom God had revealed himself in a unique way, and who looked forward to the coming of a Messiah. The problem was that they had become so set in their ways that many failed to recognize him when he came. A pregnant woman wounded in the Russian bombing of a Ukrainian maternity hospital died along with her baby following the airstrike in Mariupol, the city named after St Mary, on the 9th of March, in which at least three other people were killed. After the place where she was meant to bring new life into the world was attacked, she was taken to another hospital. Her baby was born by caesarean section, but showed no signs of life. We offer this station for all victims of warfare and violence, and that we may work for peace and harmony. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. Jesus falls for the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed redeem the world. This was the worst fall of the falls. Jesus felt as if he was about to die as he staggered up the last bit of the path to Calvary. He fell flat on his face and the bone in his nose was broken. He lay there and then with an immense effort of will staggered to his feet to totter on for the last few yards. In the southern Russian speaking cities occupied by Russian soldiers, the Ukrainians have treated them not as liberators but occupiers. In the southern Ukrainian city of Melitopol, the mayor, Ivan Fedorov, told his followers on Facebook that the Russian forces occupying the city had now taken control of the city's communications network, so they needed to be wary of what they heard on TV and on the radio. We offer this station for all who have never known Christ, and that we may be faithful to the end. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. are stripped off. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The robe of Christ was quite valuable. He was a famous person, so the soldiers did not tear it up or throw it away, but played a game to see whose it should be. And what value did they put in the naked Christ? Nothing. He was just another criminal. As fighting intensifies in Ukraine, essential services have been brought to a halt, creating huge upheaval, loss of life and separated families. More than 5 million people have now left Ukraine and a further 6 million are internally displaced. An incredibly tense, dangerous and distressing situation. Freezing temperatures of minus 20 degrees occur at this time of year. We offer this station for the poor and the homeless and that we may give them practical help and support. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As a carpenter in the home in Nazareth, Joseph had taught the young Jesus how to use nails and wood. He could little then have imagined that they would be used for his own flesh and blood. And yet, that is how human nature so often works. We take things that are good in themselves and transform them into weapons of evil. God brings good out of evil. In political circles, the question of forgiveness is too emotional at the moment. But for every Christian, the difficult issue about forgiving those who express true sorrow for their actions, however shocking, dreadful and inhumane, is a real challenge to our own humanity. We echo the words of Christ from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they do not understand what they are doing. 
We offer this station for all who suffer from constant pain and impenitence for those times we have hurt others. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from St Matthew's Gospel. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. On the cross, Jesus felt completely alone. None of his friends could help him any more. Most of them had, in any case, long since deserted him. His mother stood silently sharing his sufferings, but even she could not take away the pain and desolation. It felt as if even his father had now abandoned him. With the threat of deployment of chemical and biological weapons, not to mention the nuclear arsenal that Russia possesses, the question of whether we can ever be at peace in this world exists. Death must seem like a welcome release for many trapped in cities, under rubble, in buildings without food, water or heat. Christ is with us throughout, but when we meet our Father in heaven, there will be no more pain or suffering. We offer this station for our own intentions. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us.
Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So the limp and lifeless body of Jesus is taken down from the cross and laid in the arms of his mother. She had often held him when he was alive, but it had never looked like this. Then she remembered what St John had told her, how he had taken the bread and said, This is my body, taken the wine and said, This is my blood. Now she realised how much that had cost him. The cost of the war in Ukraine is a human tragedy. At the funeral of Dmitry Kotenko, there was no family around when they put him in the ground. His parents didn't hear the gunshots that rang out over his grave. They didn't hear the sound of the ribbon tied to the wooden cross above him as it fluttered in the wind. They didn't see the rough earth that first landed on his coffin. And they didn't lay a flower over him when he was completely covered by the earth. His parents probably didn't know their son was being buried that day in Lviv. We offer this station for all who mourn, and that we may bring them hope. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. That word who gives life to our souls is laid in the grave. At the time, they thought it was all over, and as they carried that frail and battered body to the cave, as they rolled the stone across the opening, there they tried to bury all their memories of betrayal and desolation, all their fears and shattered hopes. Those who were seeking shelter in the Donetsk Regional Theatre of Drama in Mariupol knew something terrible was going to happen. In the tomb-like basement, between 500 and 1,200 people had been hiding for 10 days from the Russian attack. Despite the devastation, around 130 people emerged alive from their living tomb. As each of us carries our own cross towards the grave, Jesus rises to everlasting life in order to renew our hope and heal our wounds. We offer this station for all who have died and that we may be prepared for our own death. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us.
full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Christ was manifested in the body, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, glorified in high heaven. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the name of the Lord, now and for ever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's have a personal prayer before leaving. Let us pray. Father, help us really to believe that the Jesus who suffered and died for all people is alive. As we have followed him in his sufferings, help us to follow him and to lead others to the glory of his resurrection. Help us to be Easter people who face the sufferings of life with hope and joy, knowing that Jesus our Saviour is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen.